Hey everyone, welcome to Unveiling. My name is Jordan Bain. My passion is to help people connect with their soul, live their true purpose, and find their joy. On this podcast, we have deep conversations about what exists behind the veils of everyday reality and how to understand the mysteries of life and make practical use of that in every day. I'm a certified international Kabbalah instructor, senior guide, healer, teacher, and ritual master in the Modern Mystery School. My guest today is Vanessa Nova. We were on a while ago. I just had a baby like 10 weeks ago, so I don't know how long ago that was that we did our last podcast, Vanessa, but welcome yeah. back. Vanessa is a third step ritual master, a certified guide and healer as well, Wiccan priestess in the Modern Mystery School, and she's been working with the lineage over 15 years since 2007. Her mission is to share real magic with creatives, entrepreneurs, and leaders of the new paradigm. She's a multi-passionate entrepreneur and weaves her background as a graphic designer, music producer, dancer, and vocalist as a way to integrate creative expression, beauty, magic, music, and art as an elevated and royal lifestyle. Vanessa is based in Oahu, Hawaii, congratulations on your move, and has been involved with building and leading communities in San Diego, California, Austin, Texas, Cape Town, South Africa. She is also a creative director and co-founder of a new paradigm digital marketing agency called Isla Nova Creative, which I've worked with myself and I can highly recommend to all of our viewers. So welcome on the show again, Vanessa. Thanks for having me back. It's been a whirlwind summer so far, hasn't it? Absolutely. And summer technically only starts tomorrow. So <laughs> my goodness. Um, that's kind of how we live sometimes as initiates. We, we live a little bit ahead of the curve and we're doing things that maybe the rest of uh, the earth is going to be doing in the next period of time. And then we're like, yeah, it's the summertime. Oh, wait, summer starts tomorrow. <laughs> Talk about leadership. This is what we're this is what we're talking about today. So we're kind of ahead of the curve. Exactly. So yeah, as you mentioned, we're talking about leadership, and we're talking about leadership from a perspective of heart and soul. And you know, you and I were chatting a little bit before the show, and I was like, maybe maybe we should not go live on this because there's so much I have to say about it that I don't want to go too deep in our, our half hour here. So um, help me stay on track with with keeping it at at the right level for for a short podcast like this but you know we when we when we do leadership so much comes to mind and and so many people have different ideas about leadership and you know this is this is a time on earth when we we need a, a kind of leadership that maybe we haven't really seen before there's been so many paradigms and models of leadership over the thousands of years on earth and you know what we what we have today is so many evolving systems that i believe that we need uh, a whole new wave and a whole new way of thinking about leadership and this is something i've been passionate about more and more for a long time and these passions have been kind of coming together for me in terms of understanding like how do we how do we create the best leaders and, and what does that look like and what do we know and what do we need to know what do we need to learn still um so you know you and i were chatting and we we're like let's do a podcast let's talk about this so yeah how go ahead no, you had you had a question. Ask a question. Yeah. How do you how do you experience like what have been your experiences with leadership? Because I think before we create a new paradigm, sometimes it's helpful to look back and see where we've come from. You know, like to yeah. be able to look over your shoulder and say, okay, so here's how I've experienced leadership so far in my life. Yeah, that's good. That's a good place to start. Um and just reflecting back on my journey, um, we're both ob obviously working with the Modern Mystery School for many years, and I've had the privilege to kind of have lab experiments in different cities in different areas and starting out with um, California, Southern California and Seattle, and then um, moving to South Africa, and then Austin, Texas and San Diego, and I'm now moving to Oahu. And I think one of the biggest biggest things that I've seen throughout that whole time and all of those different places where I got to experiment with different cultures and different communities is the, the, the first part of it is like your why, your why. And it has to really be so strong um, to overcome whatever things might come, come up for you because your why is really clued in and tuned into your own personal mission and your personal magic and your gift. So if you have that why, and you're really like dialed into that, then you know there's nothing stopping you. Things kind of fall into place. But uh, I think there's a lot of layers to it as well. And over these years, I've really um, kept stepping up into into my own power and my own value. And and I think one of the keys also is 
um, when you see a need, when you have that drive, when you see a need for leadership or you see a need for um, specific things to be built, then you have to accept that responsibility if, if you can show up with the gifts that are needed to fulfill what's needed. So I think that I've had a, an opportunity to experience that in a lot of different ways and in different places. And, um, you know, it wasn't something I ever asked for, but again, it's like when you have that why and you start to own your own gifts, you're able to see where you can step in and make a difference with the community, with the people around you. It's fascinating you say that too. And I love that we kicked it off with you, you discussing that because I also never 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 thought leadership that was not a that was not a concept for me growing up it was not a concept for me in high school or college it was i was i grew up as like a like a mystic like meditating all the time i had a spiritual awakening when i was 11 i, I spent most of my high school years almost flunking out of high school because i was meditating two or three hours a day instead of doing my homework instead of you know paying attention to what the subjects really were i, I learned what i needed to learn in high school but then same thing in college you know i rather than like dive into just one hardcore academic track in college, I studied many, many things. Um, and, and I also continued with many hours a day of meditation. So for me, I wasn't thinking I'm ever going to lead anything. I'm going to like lead myself by the hand into enlightenment and then poof, disappear from the planet one day. So <laughs> the leadership wasn't, uh, that was kind of the image I had of myself at, for, for many years, for almost a decade from probably age 15 to like 25. And then you know, fast forward beyond those years, uh, starting starting a spiritual uh, healing business, you know, first just very small scale at a local yoga studio, and then expanding that um, over the last, you know, 17 years to 18 years now to what I do today. Leadership has come more and more to the forefront of just being a need. And so my why was always, I, I want the light, I want goodness, I want, I want good things for myself, for humanity, for the planet, for the universe, all of that. So the why was always strong in that sense, but the I hadn't connected it I didn't connect it for, for many, 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 many years with any concept of leadership or need to lead. And I didn't think of leadership as including self-leadership, you know, that we do need to start with our, our true motivation. And I think it's so cool that you've, you've lived in so many places and started, helped to start and open up so many communities um, that you've seen a lot of different angles of like what it takes to lead people. So what, what would you say are some of like the, what would be like your top three if you when you're starting out a new venture? What are the top three things that you need to to make a team like work? Oh wow. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think I'm in a place of actually um, learning, looking back and reflecting since I have this blank slate ahead of me. And um, just looking back, um, yeah, team is really important. Team is important. You can't do it alone. And um, in the past, it's just been, I don't know, I think we don't live in a, uh, we're not normal people. We don't live in a normal reality. And, uh, you know, our, our spiritual kind of wavelengths that we live in, it's like you attract the people that are meant to work with you at that time. Um, but I think that I'm in a different phase of my, my you know, evolution where I'm actually like desi wanting, to, wanting to design um, what I want around me, the kind of support that I want, the kind of people that I want to build with. Um, and I think it does really require a team. Um, what was that? What was your, your question? What are the, the, when you're, so if you're starting a new venture, yeah. what are the first three things that you have found? Okay. Like, like on boots on the ground kind of thing. When you're, when you're building a team, where do you start? What do you, what, what are the questions that you're asking? What are the things that you're exploring when you are looking at building a, a team to do whatever? Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm designing that right now. And it's, it first starts with knowing yourself, right? You have to know what you're bringing to the table. I think that's the biggest piece. And that's what our path is all about, is, is learning what you have to bring to the table, what your gifts are, what your skills are, because then you can actually design around you or attract to you the people that are gonna fill in the missing pieces. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's also important to note that, you know, like, so let's go as back a to leader, Bring, yeah. what you're bringing to the table how do you how do you come to that because like I, I agree absolutely if you don't know what you're bringing there how can you weave in anything else but like how do you gain knowledge of that because, you know I've, there's all sorts of leadership things online you can take strengths-based skills assessments you can uh like what do you 
what do you suggest? Like, what's a way that people can dive in, um, either using mystery school tools or other things that you found effective to understand, like, what are they bringing to the table? Yeah, all of those things are are really valuable, like the strengths finder and different kinds of skills assessments. Those are absolutely helpful. Um, and what's interesting when I take those tests, it's like I I, I can't even answer the questions because they're, they're it's too boxy for me. It's too mm -hmm. much of a box. Um, and I think that one of the biggest ways to learn, you know, about yourself and about God, of course, because this is what you know, it's a spiritual path is Kabbalah and I'm biased to, for Kabbalah, you're biased to Kabbalah, but I think for me, um, in my own Kabbalah's journey of, sorry? Find, Kabbalah is about archetypes, so you're gonna find more of the, right. the you know, archetypes in you and that's gonna apply to everything. And that's that's yeah. not, not in a box. Well, it is in a box, but it's a different box than the world provides us. Right, I wanna hear more. Um, I wanna hear more about why, you know, what Kabbalah has done for you and, and, and how you see it is so important for leaders but i think just at least for me um i've done kabbalah six times i'm in the advanced kabbalah program currently mm -hmm. and oh wow that's like really all about leadership but um yeah. it's definitely bringing me to a new level of what it's what it means to serve what it means to lead and i think that you know conceptually what kabbalah does is clean out old patterns programs beliefs on a really deep level that are allowing you to like stay small and when mm -hmm. you when you start to dismantle those things from your consciousness what is revealed is deeper greater bigger gifts and a greater mission so mm -hmm. those things can actually be revealed until you kind of clean out some of you know some of what's keeping you small and what's keeping mm -hmm. you from seeing your own potential so uh, for me that's like in a nutshell why kabbalah has been so fundamental um is that it it really the process of kabbalah in our school with the way we work with ascension the way we bring in light and ritual and initiation into that process i think it's um it's it's priceless um and it, it's something that um definitely can only be done in the way that it's done like bringing in light to shine on things that you might actually be able to ignore or avoid for a lifetime otherwise Absolutely. You know, I've, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts and um, books like audiobooks about leadership over the last couple of years, and especially in the last like three or four months. And this, what we're talking about here with Kabbalah and what we're talking about with the path of initiation, what we're talking about by using things like that might sound a little strange to some people, uh, like rituals, like oh, we're going to use a spiritual ritual. What, what are we doing with the spiritual ritual? Well, we're, we're directing spiritual light or awareness or consciousness to there's different ways of talking about this, right? There's not one right set of words and terms to use for it, but these are just some of the terms that we use in the mystery school. We're directing that light toward a specific goal. And that goal is to know ourselves and, you know, to, to really get knowledge of yourself, to know why you're doing something like where you're coming from, what your real strengths are, clean out the, the basement of the subconscious mind so that it's not, you know, stinking and rotting when you're, when you're trying to do your leadership, you've gone through that basement enough times that, things are organized there and there's light there. And, you know, the, the areas that were uh, broken or molded or just not functional in your life, like you've gotten rid of them. And so they're not obstacles in, inside of you anymore. And when then when you go to face obstacles in the outer world, you know, you're clear on the obstacles that are in yourself. And so you have then clear vision of what you're facing as an obstacle out there. Maybe it's an obstacle in building your team. Maybe it's an obstacle in um, setting a vision Maybe it's an obstacle in the execution of something. But uh, if we don't have that clarity on the inside, then we're not going to have the clarity on the outside to be able to make clear steps. And then and so many of the processes that I read about in these, these books or listen to in podcasts about leadership is are stemming ultimately from people not knowing themselves. They're stemming from people not having insight into how they really operate. And therefore, they don't have the effect that they say they want to have in the work that they want to be doing especially on other people, because those relationships are mirrors and the, our shadows come out in those relationships. And, you know, people pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to consultants to come into their companies of all different size companies and point out to the executives or the leadership team, like how they can do things better. And that's all well and good. That's really needed. And it's, you know, it's an amazing strength that, um, that companies have to be able to hire outside consultants to go in 
look at their teams and, and analyze them and say what's working and what's not working. But then the, there, then there comes the implementation, right? And this is where over and over again, leadership coaches and consultants and, and companies that do this as their entire business will say that the implementation phase is failing. It's failing because the, the people that have paid $500,000 to a company to come in for several weeks and like interview their employees and do focus groups and figure out what's working and what's not working, the, the leaders fail to implement that because they don't want to look at themselves. They don't want to see how they could really make the change. They don't want to see how that problem might be coming from, maybe it's coming from the highest levels of the organization. Maybe it's coming from things that they, they have good intentions around, but they're not actually really listening to. Maybe, and, there, and these examples go on and on, like uh, in terms of how, how organizations and individuals don't take feedback mm -hmm. and can't integrate feedback. And it's really, it all comes down to what you were saying a few minutes ago. People can't integrate the feedback that they're hearing because they don't um, do the work to clean out the old things in themselves. They don't let go. They don't let go of the past. So yeah. when we start using mystery school tools, we're able to, and there's so much more to this than just that, but um, we're able to, to go very deeply, very quickly into like all these questions that we really need to ask ourselves if we want to build a successful team, if we want to lead. Um, and it all starts with us. It doesn't start anywhere else. It's, it right. never, it's never about that other person on my team. If they're having a problem, it's like, I'm having a problem. If there's a lack of clarity over there, there's, I have a lack of clarity over here. And I've never found any system like the mystery school that teaches that. We teach that right from day one and empower thyself actually right. in a first level initiation. But then we, you know, every step, healer's academy, uh, ritual master guide, we're always learning through reflection. We're always learning that that thing out there works or doesn't work because of how I'm interacting with it. It's that quantum, quantum consciousness, quantum reality. So what are, what are the, the other two things? So this is, this is step one. You know, when you're building a team, and this is why I was saying, like, we got to keep this short. Can you please help me stay yeah. on track. No, know, know, by, know the, myself. So, so know thyself. That was the first step, right? The first step, right? Know thyself and and um, be willing to see that reflection, mm -hmm. see the reflection everywhere, so that you can take responsibility and then make a change. So, then, what would you say the next two steps are when you're looking at building a team on the ground? Like, what do you what do you take into consideration? What questions are you asking? Yeah, I think I think the second the second one that I was gonna um, start, you know, rolling around here with our conversation is um, self sovereignty, self leadership, and you know I think that there's a danger with teams, and I, I've experienced this in my own you know my own experiments, right? That mm -hmm. um, if that if you have people that are really only skilled in certain things, or they're they're just like only they're not really bringing much to the table, or it's not, there's not a balance and each person isn't standing in their own leadership and own sovereignty, then you have a weak vessel. Like there's mm. people that are carrying other people's weight and it's, I mean, it couldn't be codependent or something like that. Like how you do everything is how you do every, how you do something is how you do everything. Right. So mm. if you're not working on those patterns and like the know thyself part, which is number one, and really getting to know like where your weaknesses are, where your strengths are, um, then it's, it's, it's easy for teams to become really like codependent. And mm. I've, I've had that experience. And, you know, I think it's you really what that like with, with codependency on teams, because I think maybe at this point, you know, there's been enough, there's been enough discussion in the collective consciousness over the last 20, 30 years uh, with some really pioneering work in, in psychology of relationships on what codependence looks like in individual relationships. But what does codependence look like on a team? Well, I think this goes into sort of, to, I mean, your, to answer your question, it looks like, you know, not really being able to hold your own as a whole, you know, and so we, we, what I'm, what I'm really seeing in the terms of new paradigm leadership is that we're all leaders, we're all individually leaders coming together as a team. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like a CEO of a company should be able to know how to operate any, any branch of the company. Or they should know that know a little bit about marketing, a little bit about operations, a little bit about administration, because if they aren't able to, you know, just step in and understand what what that function is, there there's still a weakness there. 
Mm-hmm. So I think that like what I'm trying to say is Does that play the opposite way also that the person who's, you know, on the marketing team or the person who's doing operations or fulfillment or uh, product development or any of that, should that person also be able then to do some of the functions or at least have a taste of all those executive functions? I think ideally, you know, I, I mean, we're really leaning into something quantum here. Mm-hmm. And like, this is like the next level of leadership. And I'm curious to hear a little, you know, more about what your v- vision of new paradigm leadership looks like. But, you know, to me, I feel like it is possible if we are quantum multidimensional beings that we should have like a little bit of understanding of many, many, many different things. Right. And so yeah. I, I think that like part of it is, you know, number one is talk no- about three hours. So. <laughs> Yeah, I know. So number one is know thyself. Number two is self-sovereignty and self-leadership and like being able to, uh, you know, have a full breadth of what the mission is and what the object is and, you know, what what the business is, for example, the organization needs rather than like leaving it to somebody else. Yeah. And that's, Which is that's, exactly like, that's leadership, point. right? Right. Because if, if you have employees and or and or collaborators or colleagues in your organization who do not know themselves, then you can put them in just one role or just two roles or whatever roles they're, they're competent at, but then they, they aren't able to, so there's ability, there's ability and then there's empowerment and then there's like authorization. Right. So can right. they, okay. May, like that's a checkbox. Like, can they, yes or no? Can they do these things? Like, can, can they take executive, like, do they have the capacity as individuals to have some executive capability if they're if we're talking about someone who's sort of at the lower rungs of an organization so to speak who's more doing the the execution of of this task and that task and that task but they're not actually the one who's deciding much about it so uh, does that person then have a capability great if they do let's move on to the next thing which is then um are they empowered within the organization yeah to actually do that or is that like not is that against their job description are they going to get terminated if they if they take that initiative right and then there's also, um, you know, the authorization uh, across the organization for, for this way of being. The, does an organization encourage um, sort of a holographic quantum leadership model of everyone in the organization? They all have their roles because we need roles. We need specializations. Otherwise, why have an organization? It's not organized. Right. Right. We need structure. We need, <laughs> we need structure. structure. And we need, and the structure, um, you know, this is a whole other discussion for another podcast, but the structure is hierarchical. Consensus structure is not something that we would say from a perspective of hermetic teachings really works. So just to have everyone agree about something all the time won't really lead to the kind of progress that we need if we're, if we're trying to bring light. Um, you know, we bring light down from source and from God, and we have individual, as, as God goddesses here in the physical world, we are not God goddess of the universe. We're God goddess of our own life. Mm-hmm. We're the one who's in charge of our own life. And so my will as an individual divine be- eternal being is that's all well and good. And it's equal to your will as an eternal divine being. And we're both sovereign, eternal divine beings. That's great. Whatever you want to call that. And we're not, not attached to this language used to describe it, but these concepts are there as pointing at a, a deeper reality. Right. And, Okay, that's fine. So then, but we're also answering to a higher authority. We're part of a, a higher structure as well. And that higher structure, maybe some people are very, very uncomfortable with that concept of a higher structure spiritually. And I don't want to take us too far off track here, or, you know, or into another field of discussion, but, you know, we're all working for God or for the light or for source. So when we, when, when we're working, we're, we're bringing down that sense of higher will into what we're doing. And in an organization, it's it's the same. There is there is a higher will. What is that higher will? Well, ultimately, if an organization is going to be successful in the new paradigm, that higher will should be focused also on the light. Right. It should also be focused on goodness. And then the people in the organization might be at different levels of their capacity to see the big picture, to do the tasks that are needed. But if they can all holographically see where everyone else in the organization is operating from and how they're getting that done, then they can they can have meaningful input. Everyone has the agency that they need to have. Everyone's authorized within that organization to, to give the feedback, to make the changes. And the organization then becomes very, very dynamic. And we, we see that a lot in you know, the way the mystery school operates, that 
And, I, and then I'd, I'd look at how could we take that into to other companies? How could we take that to government organizations? How could we take that to, um, to nonprofit organizations? How can we take that to faith organizations to be able to, to have everyone know themselves, to have everyone have this sense of agency um, and not end up, like you're saying, um, you know, codependence, one way to say it, um, incapable is another way to say it. <laughs> Incapable right. of making change, incapable of carrying their own weight, and instead the organization gets bogged down um, with people who are maybe doing each other's jobs, people who are maybe not communicating clearly about what needs to be done, and people who are um, sometimes forced to take on responsibilities that they're not ready for um, based on the needs of the moment. And then the inflexibility that comes in an organization where like, let's say you call up customer service on the phone. That person in customer service can really only stick to a script. In every organization I've ever spoken to on the phone, you know, we have to all call companies all the time. Like, I had to call JetBlue because my flight was delayed and whatever. You know, aside from the fact I had to wait six hours on hold to actually talk to someone there, there's nothing they can do. Organizations right now in this old paradigm energy that we're still sort of suffering through on the planet I don't know how long it's going to take to change this, but I think it's up to us to make these changes as mystery school initiates and, and light workers first. Th there's nothing that, that that representative could do for me because they can only stay on script. And if they, if they deviate from the script, they will be fired. Yeah. They have their operating procedures. And so that, that I've never encountered a, a large organization that I've spoken to in terms of customer service where they can actually serve their customers in a flexible way that creates like a win-win outcome only it, or, or it only allows you to have the win-win within this little box over here. It doesn't. Yeah. That, I mean, that actually just goes back to like the whole alignment piece. Like, you know, it has to be aligned from the bottom up and the top down mm -hmm. with light, with progression, with, you know, a win-win situation for everyone. Right. So that, that kind of like goes back into like designing organizations, but I like, let's bring it back because we have not that much time. So right. like if, if the first key is, you know, what we're talking about in this specific conversation, if the first key is know thyself, the second key is like, you know, leading yourself self leadership so that, okay. there, you know, that, that, that there's actually like a, a quantum dynamic flow between all everyone as leaders in mm -hmm. an organization. Mm -hmm. What would you think would be like the third piece? Yeah, we're looking at know thyself and then we're looking at sovereignty and like a holographic leadership model. I think the third piece for people is faith. And I don't mean just, you know, faith in Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, what Krishna, like not, not, not that kind of faith, not religious faith. And not just faith in oneself, but a, a faith that I think no one really knows exactly what it looks like yet mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. planet. We don't know what it would look like to, because if we're going to do number one and number two, we're going to know ourselves and we're going to be sovereign. We're going to have a holographic sovereign leadership model. Man, we, we better all really have faith in ourselves and each other. Yeah. We better have faith in the human collective. Um, how, do we, how do we come to that faith in the human collective? I, I, I know the, the work we do in the mystery school it allows people to come to that faith in the human collective. I don't know of another system that reliably delivers that faith in, in the human collective. But when I look at organizations and their structures and I, you know, read about challenges in leadership and, you know, this is really something I, it's always been fascinating to me. And now in the last few months, I'm, I'm really taking it very seriously as, as a structural problem that if we're going to create a better world, we have to change this. Mm. We have to change how organizations operate. So, you know, as, as I gain more insight into this, I'm like, well, the people in these organizations don't have faith in each other. They don't have faith in themselves. They don't have faith in each other. And the every man for themselves thing, which is the old paradigm concept of sovereignty. I'm over here and I can do it. Right. Okay. But that, that won't lead to successful leadership. That won't lead to successful organizations. That won't lead to the outcomes you know, we always have to know it by the fruits. So if you're taking this action and then that's the result and you keep doing the same action over and over again, we're not going to get to that new paradigm business. We're not going to get to win-win business. We're going to get to win-lose business. And when someone always loses, there's always a battle. There's always a struggle. And this goes against um, 
everything that is a spiritual teaching from any culture around the world that we should be living in, uh, moving toward peace. That when we really find God, when we really find the light, we should be moving toward a world of peace. And yet if our organizations are set up for win-lose leadership, we're never going to have peace. I'm getting excited about this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting really excited about this. And, you know, what you're saying, and I started to really start, you know, envision because we don't know what this is going to look like. You're, you're exactly right. And I, because I've had the opportunity to, you've been there in the Boston area, you know, having your own laboratory and experiment with community and with leadership and with a spiritual community for many, many years. And I've kind of piecemealed it and tried different things and, you know, walked away from different experiments. And um, I think one of the things that is super um, exciting is what, what you're talking about, like this new potential, new possibility of, of creating organizations and creating communities from a completely different place. Mm -hmm. And like the foundation of it being, you're saying there's a lack of faith. Well, what if it were even just like alignment in an organization that's coming from these higher dimensional ideals of faith, hope, charity, and love? What mm -hmm. if our organizations were aligned with these kinds of um, with these kinds of qualities in mind, like seeing mm -hmm. each other as God and goddess because we see ourselves as God and goddess, and we're mm -hmm. each self-sovereign, and we're each bringing our own unique gifts to the table. But we can only do that through raising our vibration and through using these sort of, al you know, these alchemical tools that we have in the mystery mm -hmm. school. Like you said, I haven't seen any other way to elevate people to the level where they're really understanding their own divinity and like the impact that we can create when we're raising our quotient of light or our, you know, 10 times, a hundred times, a thousand times, how, how else can you do that? Have you seen yeah, any other way? Because blind faith is different than what I'm talking about. Right. Because if I just meet yeah. you and I can't see myself, then I can't really see you. And then I can say, well, I have faith in Vanessa because because why? Because her resume, because of what she's done, because of uh, the cover letter she wrote when I hired her. None of those things are really a replacement for faith. Those are like mental hedges against risk. So a mental hedge against risk based on a resume or what HR said or the interviews that we did is really different than I know myself, I can see myself, therefore I can know you and see you much better. I'm not, we never fully, fully know everything about ourselves. We're always growing. We're always evolving. We're always changing. And of course, if I can't see the, the fullness of everything that I am in every moment, then I'm not going to see the new, but we can move toward that. We can move toward that knowing fully of ourselves. We can move toward fully knowing somebody else. So the more I know myself, the more I can see into myself, the more I can see into you. And then, the, then I can have real faith. I can have real faith instead of blind faith, instead of hope, Oh, I, I hope Vanessa does a good job. No, I know she's going to do a great job. I have faith in her because I can see who she is. You know, and that's one of the reasons that that I hire you. And I like, this is not a hypothetical. Right? This is like, I actually do hire you and we do work together and, and you do amazing work. And it's not just, um, it's not just like a pipe dream to be able to, to believe in people in your organization. Like you, you have to know yourself to see yourself, to see them as sovereign so that you can actually have faith in them. And we can really work miracles as leaders. And we can, I believe, really bring in a new paradigm of leadership if we if we do these three things. So we're let's totally recap. Time. What's, yeah. the, what's a recap? Yeah, a recap. So number one is know yourself as, you know, know yourself and what your gifts are and mm -hmm. um, understanding what you can bring to the table. And also, you know, that has to be also driven by a why mm -hmm. uh, number two yeah. what's number two sovereignty you know yeah. sovereignty and, and understanding like i mean i'm not we don't need to go in that whole discussion but basically like you need to be able to have people who are functioning holographically in your organization holographically meaning that each one is aware of the other parts and each one has some of the reflection of the other parts in it so that everyone can be coordinated at all times in the organization and everyone is empowered they're, they're capable, empowered, and authorized to um, to synthesize and to make changes right. in the organization in real time 
uh, or if not in real time, in, in very close to real time, like having meetings on a regular basis so that your teams can uh, coordinate like up updates and that the parameters can be set so that within this group, within this set of parameters, we make these kinds of decisions. When the parameters change, we make these kinds of decisions and everyone can see eye to eye on that um, and be yeah. able to understand like why things are happening. So, and then- It's a different kind of, model. It's a yeah, very different and, model. And the, because yeah. the, this isn't like, we're not trying to have the same outputs in business that we've always had. We're not trying to have the same, uh, like why, why would you redo a new paradigm just so everyone can feel a little bit fluffier? Mm -hmm. Like we're not, the new paradigm is not about everyone has a big smile and feels great all the time. The new it's paradigm, not, and it's not, yeah, it's not comfortable because we don't know what it's going to look like too. So no, I mean, I hope we're all way, way happier, but it's much more than just everybody's happier and everything. Business is usual, but everyone's happier. That's not the new paradigm. The new paradigm is something no. much greater and much it's greater, higher deeper than that. Yeah. Much higher than that. So, so again, we don't know what it looks like, but we do know that these organizations that operate in these different ways are going to produce different results. They're going to right. produce a different world and it's going to lead to world peace rather than the conflicts that we have today, which, which is win-lose business. And then finally, number three, we need faith. We need to be able to have faith in ourselves, faith in each other as you know, colleagues in an organization. Um, and without that faith, the other, like, you know, actually making your organization go in the direction we want it to, it won't be possible. It's, it's going to stay stuck. It's, we're not going to authorize the kinds of changes that are needed if we don't believe in each other. So. Yeah. I, yeah. If, if I could, I would actually even love to extend number three into you know, aligning with higher ideals, like these higher ideals of faith as the beginning point, but then hope and love and charity um, yeah. as you know, the, the, a new platform, a new foundation for what we build from rather than profit or, you know, like other reasons why we would have an organization. Like the goal is not profit. The goal is something else. So like, you know, that's a conversation that's had in these kinds of conversations. But if we can align from, you know, align and build an organization and our leadership, you know, the, the structures of our leadership from higher spiritual ideals, which is, we, of course we don't see that in organizations. That is like, that's something that is really exciting to me as somebody who, is leaning into and um, always excited about the new paradigm. Yeah, the output of these organizations is, is a world of peace. So we're heading there. We're heading there, and we're gonna have more well, of these conversations. So I'm I'm really glad that you know you're you think about these things, Jordan, and uh, it's really nice to have conversation with you because it's it's like who else do I get to talk about? these things with so if anybody else wants to talk about these things you know you know how to find us so yeah hit us up so thank you all for watching if you enjoyed this please subscribe on youtube follow me on facebook instagram and all those socials and we love you guys thanks for tuning in have a great day take care everyone bye